Thank you. I had written a presentation about myself to start with, but I have literally nothing else to add. <laughs> I am going to talk about intergenerational storytelling. Um, at State of the LARP 2018, I held a workshop about this, um, where it talked about how you can accommodate for inter intergenerational storytelling at your LARP, but since I only have a few minutes, I am going to focus on what it is and why it is important, why I think everyone should do it. So, intergenerational storytelling is the result of when players from multiple generations come together to, to create a story that is equally inclusive, engaging, and responsive to all of them. The same story is told from multiple generational perspectives at once, where the different perspectives are equally important. It differs from what I call parallel generational storytelling, which is when players from different generations tell different stories alongside each other at the same lap. Like at a family lap, if you send all the children off on an adventure that has nothing to do with the plot that the adults are playing, that would be parallel generational storytelling. It's also different from what I call pseudo-ageless storytelling, which is when either players from the same generation portray different generations. So if I would play an 80-year-old woman at a lap, that would be pseudo-ageless storytelling. Or when players from multiple generations portray characters of the same generation, like at a college lap, where everyone is around 25-ish. Um, there are definitely differences between the two types of pseudo-ageless storytelling, but I don't have time to dive into that right now, so you will have to be satisfied with this brief introduction. So, moving on. What are the benefits of intergenerational storytelling? The first one is inclusion and regrowth. For intergenerational storytelling to be possible, the presence and active participation of players from different generations are required. Designing for intergenerational storytelling means designing for age diversity and inclusion. And a very pleasant side effect of making people of all ages feel not only welcomed, but wanted at your LARP is the potential regrowth of the LARP community. Uh, because there is definitely a divide right now, in my opinion, between LARPers in their teenage years to early 20s and LARPers in their 30s to middle age. And with very few exceptions, we barely see any LARPers above the age of 60. So people are missing out on LARP. And more importantly, we are missing out on them, their stories, their thoughts and opinions, their perspectives. Which brings me to my second point, perspective. And this one has two subpoints. The first one is perspective realism. Because regardless of whether your LARP is high fantasy or historically inspired or a black box yoga adventure, I don't know, there is always a certain amount of realism to it. That's how we can relate to the stories we tell, how we connect to them emotionally. And realistically, most stories aren't told by a single generation. There are exceptions, of course, uh, but in general, stories include people from multiple generations, especially stories that concern family dynamics of any kind. What I'm trying to say is that intergenerational storytelling is already happening every day in the so-called real world. You've heard about it. And it's such a natural element in life that it only makes sense to include it when we simulate life through LARP. Then it is perspective through life experience. People from different generations have different amounts and types of life experience. We all know this. This affects how we see the world and how we tell stories. And that is worth treasuring. Children growing up now have more technology present and easily accessible than ever before. 
people my age grew up during one of the most peaceful periods in the Western world in history. And my great-grandmother, who only passed away a few years ago, was a teenager during the Second World War. And this colors our interactions with each other, and thus our family dynamics. If we can bring that into LARP and emphasize it, I think our stories will be all the more powerful because of how we will relate to them. My third point is about power dynamics. Because the presence of several generations automatically changes the power dynamics of a situation. We tend to rely on our seniors for guidance and advice and want to protect and aid those who are younger than us. At the same time, the younger people represent the future and will eventually become the caretakers of their elders. Introducing that balance of codependence to your LARP will allow for more interesting power dynamics, especially if you switch them up. You can be inspired by history in the real world and make a teenager the highest in command. That will definitely change the entire power dynamic and thus the story. The fourth point, and my most important one, is about understanding. Because sometimes we use LARP to explore narratives foreign to us as players in order to better understand other people's perspectives. Of course, this can also be applied to generational differences. I think there is a great potential here where we could use LARP to understand the reasons behind the differences between us, our children, our parents, our grandparents, and so on. Which, you know, like everything else with LARP, this will eventually lead to us saving the world, I'm just saying. <laughs> on, on a smaller scale, this can be used intergenerational storytelling, can be used as a tool for family bonding. We often talk about LARP as a tool to create new relationships and meet new people. But what about deepening already established ones, like with your parents or children? As I said, I am a second generation LARPer. My mother took me to my first LARP when I was 10. And about four or five years later, my father and my little sister joined us. This is actually my little sister, the little blonde with the parasol right there, um, LARPing with one of my mother's friends. Um, I spent most of my formative years LARPing with my family, and it definitely changed the way we communicate with and relate to each other. For better and for worse, of course. We've all heard about bleed. It's complicated. <laughs> <laughs> but mostly for the better. Finally, if you want to know more about my experience with intergenerational storytelling, I am hosting a panel together with Halfson Keller Eustacen at KP Sunday, 4 to 5 p.m. It's going to be in room M3, and we will have LARPers who have LARPed with their parents or with their children, and we will have organizers who have worked with or are currently working with intergenerational storytelling. So please drop by. And if you want to see my take and experience my take on intergenerational storytelling, I am organizing Tale of the North Wind in Sweden in May. That's our URL. You can also come talk to me later tonight during the weekend. We still have spots to sign up for, so get them while they're hot. Thank you so much.